Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today we are going to find out what Mars wants us to know and I've got the Mars cards out of the Vedic Astrology deck and we're going to shuffle these and find out what does Mars want us to know and I thought I'd show you this here, Mars in his exaltation position here, Mars in the 10th house. I am wearing blue <laughs> in honor of Saturn. I know I'm wearing the wrong color again today, but but Mars likes Saturn. Look at that. This is where he's exalted because Saturn sets the structure. He sets the platform. He creates the stage on which Mars can perform. So it's good to have a bit of Saturnian energy here as well. So feel free to choose your group group number one, two or three and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there group number one. If you chose group number one then you're in the right place. Now before we shuffle from these we're going to take one of these Mars cards. Let's see what we get. I hope you're having a good week wherever you are. And in the intro, I forgot to mention a bit about Mars, that Mars, you know, he rules the physical body. Oh, by the way, thank you to, if we have any regular group one people here, thank you to whoever told me that it was the raccoon whisperer that I talked about last time. That was so cool. It was good to hear the story as well about who the raccoon whisperer is. I didn't realize he was doing that like as a tribute to his wife. How sweet. So... Yeah, that was so good to learn about. But yeah, Mars does rule, you know, first house, physical body. Uh, what else? It's our drive, it's our courage, it's action. This is what we're going to do. This is Mars is that impulse to do something. Mars wants to do something. So we're going to take a look and see what Mars wants you to know. What does he want you to do, possibly? Think today is going to be about going to get some guidance on what you need to do doing energy okay so we're going to have a look at these we're going to have i think one of these wow we've got some really large cards here i'm kind of going to fill the space that's good all right there we go let's begin let's take a look so which Mars card did you get? Mars in the eighth house. Okay, so it's so interesting that I was talking about what does Mars want you to do? This is one of the places where Mars is actually not so active. I've seen this in people's birth charts, and especially if he's lauded by Venus or any of that. This is a kind of place where Mars stops. So we've got here Mars in the eighth house, accident prone, Domestic life challenging, could lose spouse. I mean, that's obviously in a severe case if there's afflictions and things like that, and depending how it's placed. Um, dislikes relatives, gains from siblings, makes a good doctor or healer. Yeah, can make a great surgeon, you know, um, in this place here. Secret assets and likes the occult. Okay. But as I say, when it comes to Mars, and what's he encouraging you to do? I actually think he might be encouraging you to rest or to stop. Let's keep going though and see what the rest of the guidance is here. Okay, so we've got the seventh house. Seventh house, this is the house of partnerships. So at least we've got the symbols for Libra and Venus here. Here is where we can see the personal relationships that involve commitment or cooperation of some sort, marriage, spiritual union, agreements, societies and business partnerships. I relate. All right. A very literal meaning of this straight away could be that perhaps there is a, a break or, or a change in, in a partnership or in a relationship, significant relationship. There could be, perhaps you're having to pause in a significant relationship, something along these lines. 
Malika of Swords. So this, I believe, would be the Princess of Swords. I do think this would be the Page of Swords, if I've got that right. But we've got this new Swords energy here. And I always like to see this as a card of learning. You're learning something new. Let's keep going through this reading. You might learn something new about yourself in, in the context of relationships, partnerships. It's good that we've got Chuck Spezzano in the jar today. So that's great. Nice. Ride the wave. That's so beautiful. Gosh, is that a person on the dolphin? Yes, it is. Wow. Well, we've got another partnership type thing going on here and we've got 14, which is five, which is a change number. Okay. So there could be a change in a significant partnership of yours. We have just had a really big eclipse. So, and I'm pretty sure, and that's running on the one seven axis, isn't it? So that's, that's all about uh, soul contracts, partnerships. I think the last eclipse would have been something I would have talked about you being an individual, things like that. So I think this is a time where you're learning a lot about yourself and you're learning, you're learning about who you are. And sometimes we learn the most about ourselves through the reflections we get from other people because other people will, like in our interaction with another person, that's where we get to see sides of ourselves that if we, if we were just all alone by ourselves all the time, those sides of ourselves wouldn't be triggered or wouldn't be brought to the surface or we wouldn't know, right? And this is something I've thought about because um, in England when I've lived, yeah, let's have a look, what are you learning about? In England, when I've lived on my own a lot, I realized that, wow, I hardly ever get angry. <laughs> and it's like, because there's no one <laughs> to trigger that or there's no one to bring it up or there's no one, you know, so if you're by yourself for a really long time, there are all these sides of yourself that you will actually not see or know or it takes someone else to come in and trigger that or bring that up. So this is a very rich time where you're learning a huge amount about yourself and let's see what you are learning about yourself. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, you're learning about, yeah, I mean, this, this is really coming up strong here. We've got the seventh house, we've got the eighth house, which is, you know, an, an eighth house, seventh house, when that's got a really strong connection, that can be, your, your spouse is here in the eighth house too. And it can, sometimes you can see things like splitting up and stuff like that when there's a connection between seventh and eighth lords. Uh, let's have a look here. So we've got, you know, partnership. We've got the lovers, okay. We've got ride the wave. We've got these two dolphins here. So clearly I think this is a time where you are learning a lot about yourself, definitely specifically in the context of love, okay. Learning about who you are, what your needs are, and, and things might be being brought to the surface at this time. Let's see what is being brought to the surface. And it's interesting that these dolphins have come up to the surface of the water. What's being brought up to the surface here in your love life, in how you are in relationships? Let's take a look. So what's being brought to the surface? Okay, High Priestess, she really wants to be here. There are other cards, so we won't look at them, but she wants to be here, so let's just bring that up. But I'm still gonna ask what's being brought to the surface. Because, well, the High Priestess, that is a card. Now she is quiet <laughs> and she doesn't, she doesn't wanna say too much. Uh, it, and this, this is that wise, all-knowing part of you that doesn't have to speak. So is that being brought to the surface? Let's keep going because I feel like there's something else here. What's being brought to the surface in the context 
of love seven of coins okay this is again a bit more pause energy this is a bit more stop energy this is a bit more stop and assess stop and look stop and see and this is a stop energy here too i do believe that yeah mars in the eighth is a bit of stop energy you know you're not if you've got mars in the eighth house and I, there's a very significant chart of someone who i've known for a very long time since childhood and he has this placement and yeah he, he doesn't do much <laughs> so i'm kind of basing this information of stop on him um and we've got here the seven of coins which is pause stop reflect assess okay so you are assessing perhaps some feelings that have come to the surface any guidance on that any feelings that have come to the surface again we've got this energy that's being protective and quiet and you know don't don't want to don't want to go there possibly but let's take a look any what are, what are the feelings that are coming to the surface here are there any feelings that are coming to the surface and that could have been triggered by the most recent eclipse what are the feelings that are coming to the surface right now and i'm getting a sense that you're doing really well you're doing really well as you learn about yourself and as you learn about who you are what you need in relationships what's important to you okay mm, feelings ah, nothing's coming to the surface Ah, this one is, thank goodness. <laughs> Three of Wands. Well, again, we're not, we're not really getting any feelings here. Three of Wands, there's just some, some fire, there's future, you know, we're looking to the future. But then this is also a character who's, well, she's on the go, she's on the move, but she doesn't, it's like she doesn't want to look at the feelings. How interesting all right we'll, we'll dig a little bit further maybe but then why don't we take one from here stoic wisdom stoic is, that's quite appropriate actually <laughs> um, any clues about the feelings that are coming up to the surface and, and what what it is that we're learning oh okay good well we've got it sort of all right too all right let's take them both don't know what these are six of pentacles right okay so we've got six of pentacles this is, i was thinking this was one of the feeling cards because it's a bluish kind of a color but we've got here six of pentacles moon in taurus oh that's lovely so that is feeling but again it's moon so it's kind of hidden emotion there is no such thing as justice in the abstract it is merely a compact between men epicurus yeah i mm, there is no such thing as justice in the abstract is merely a compact between men interesting well this is the six of pentacles and whatever it is that is being brought up to the surface you definitely have to look at your feelings as much as you look at the other person's feelings or empathize with them maybe you've got this thing where you're too much uh, in, in the other person's thoughts and feelings but not looking at your own that's a possibility very often we're so concerned about the other person that we forget that well, hey we're a whole person right here you know <laughs> oh how nice two of cups yeah well there's some feeling here venus in cancer beautiful it never ceases to amaze me we all love ourselves more than other people Ah, but care more about their opinion than our own marcus aurelius yes yes that's exactly what i was just saying that you know we're so often just all thinking about oh what do they think and you know what's going on in their head and, and what's going on in their heart but we're totally neglecting our own head and our own heart you know and um yeah I think you're learning a huge amount about yourself at this time group number one i think you're doing really well with this so let's get some guidance from and i don't i feel like there's nothing particularly that you need to do at this time in terms of the mars guidance i think the mars guidance is just sort of sit tight really and um 
and and keep learning keep learning you're, you're in a massive time of possibly transformation transition learning and group one has been like this for a while and it's so interesting i don't know if you can hear there's a garbage truck in the background <laughs> So maybe a lot of like uh, old energies are being cleared from your path right now. Let's take these two. And I have no idea what's in here. I just stuffed that full. I don't even know what number is in there. I took two handfuls of quotes. <laughs> I was supposed to put Stuart Wilde in there this week for Mars, but then I ran out of time. Doesn't matter. This is good because this is all about partnerships anyway. So this is perfect. I've got the right guy right here. All right, the ego at some point will attack viciously to regain control. Self-attack is a conflict and conflict blocks abundance. Yes, that's so true. You definitely don't want to have any conflict energy within you, right? Um, and I think that's why this is a time of learning about yourself, about who you are, what it is that you want, um, you know, what's important to you. As it says here, what's what's your opinion, you know, on things? Uh, but yeah, self-attack is a conflict and conflict blocks abundance. It's the energy of conflict that will block abundance, right? There's no green lights in that situation. That's fascinating. We've got Mars in the eighth. Stop. We've got stop sign <laughs> right here. That's amazing. Yeah. So there could be some conflict energy uh, present at the moment and I think this is a time where you are learning about about what that is and where that is in your life this could also very much be business partnerships you know we've got the seventh house here it does say um, societies and business partnerships could also be a uh, we've got spiritual union here I'm so glad that this card acknowledges that because the seventh house is it's it's partnership with the divine if you don't have someone at the moment and that's why I tend to think, yeah, consider it the divine, you know. If I were to know who it is that I'm trying to punish by having lack in my life, it's probably dot, dot, dot. This is one of the exercises that he gives. Okay, so Chuck Spezzano, apologies about the cut there, it's just the memory card ran out. Um, Chuck Spitzano gives these really good exercises in his book and he'll give you a line like this and what he wants you to do this is like a meditation or journaling prompt he wants you to sit down and he wants you to think about this and write down just what comes into your mind so who is it that you're trying to punish by having lack in your life and sometimes you know sometimes it's it's our parents sometimes it's siblings ex-lovers, um, current lovers, like it can be, you know, all kinds of people. It can be ourselves, you know, it can be God as well, right? Sometimes Some people are in a conflict with God. Because ultimately what we want is we just want to fully be embodying and feeling as much as possible just the energy of peace, just the energy of well, yeah, peace. That's what I'm going for most of the time these days. If I can achieve that, that would be a good thing. Shall we take one more? Group number one. I know last time, I think I did, I did three for the previous groups, but I only did two for you last time. So we'll do three for you. Only if you have the courage to embrace your heart balance and who you truly are okay so balance is a noun so i'll start this again only if you have the courage to embrace your heart balance and who you truly are can you reach the partnership stage and its bounty in relationships yeah that's beautiful and that this is this is your solution i tell you if mars wants you to get good at something or do something he wants you to be courageous to just be in the heart space and being in the heart space is this it's love it's a two of cups it's you know yes caring for other people but caring for your own self as well and looking for balance look at that we've got the six of pentacles here as well this is a card of balance for sure right equal give and take that's got to be that's got to be in your 
in all of your relationships, equality. That's the ideal thing to go for. Group number one, you're doing amazing. I want to thank you so much for being here. Let me know how you got on in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two, then you are in the right place. Before I shuffle from these, we're going to find out what Mars wants to say to you. Now Mars is... You know, I think in Western astrology, they consider him the god of war. Is that right? <laughs> I think that's right. Venus is the god, goddess of love and uh, this is the god of war. And Mars, I mean, in Vedic astrology, of course, we, we see, um, yeah, war and battle and all of that from Mars as well. But I think you know, Mars is a bit more, um, he fights the good fight. He fights for what he believes in. I think there's a bit of a justice component. Well, yeah, there would be in the Western system too. Anyway, let's carry on. <laughs> Getting carried away. Ooh, all right, we've got cards overboard. Let's just, I'll just make sure that they're upright, yep. Okay. I hope you're having a good week wherever you are. Okay, this wants to be here, so we're gonna take it. Scorpio. We've seen it, we can't unsee it now. <laughs> Got some Scorpio energy here, right. We kind, of, we kind of had some in group one as well. Wow, I think it's that full moon that we just had. Was that that full moon eclipse? Was that intense for people? That was very intense for me. I remember launching like two videos last Friday and then I was so exhausted, like unusually exhausted. For about two days. I might have had a bit of a cold. I still feel like I've got something. I don't know. I just need rest. I think we all need a bit of rest. That's the big message that comes at the weekend. Right. Let's see, this is the Enchanted Map Oracle. I thought this would be quite good Mars-like. It's a good map. Because <laughs> um, I'm sure Mars likes that kind of thing, plotting territories and all that, boundaries, yeah. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, oh, Mars in the seventh house. Well, it's quite interesting because we know that this is Scorpio here. This is kind of just like group one. This is amazing. And it's kind of in the reverse. We've got Mars in the seventh house here. Wants to win arguments or clients, makes a great lawyer, surgeon, May marry twice, loves passion, owns properties, if afflicted, experiences losses. Okay, yeah, so I mean, when I read Mars in the seventh house, the, the typical thing there is that, yeah, if you're in a partnership, in a relationship, you know, uh, you, you might have conflicts with people, arguments, you know. Um, and sometimes some people, they kind of thrive on that. They need a bit of drama in their life too. Some people enjoy that as well. I was doing a reading, actually, this was funny, yesterday. I don't know if he watches Pick a Card. I have a feeling he doesn't. He's got Mars in the sixth house. And I was saying how Mars in the sixth, you, you probably want, you know, you, you, you probably enjoy argument. I said it in a diplomatic way though. I, I kind of said that like, if you're in the ring, you're like, you're inviting people in, like, come on. Come, come and fight me. Because <laughs> that's Mars in the sixth, right? Where I think Mars in the sixth thrives there. But I think Mars in the seventh kind of st struggles here a little bit. Actually, it's not, it's, not, it's not a good place for Mars, Mars in the seventh. Mars in the sixth is. Mars in the sixth is the one that kind of thrives on um, having an argument. Uh, it builds himself up through that. Whereas Mars in the seventh, it's not, it's not fun for anybody. But... The, I think one of the good empowered ways of reading this Mars in the seventh is that you become an advocate for people. This also makes a great lawyer. Yeah, look at that great lawyer. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, this is for sure. You, you, you become an incredible advocate for people, definitely. So we've got Scorpio here. I mean, this could be, and this is something I didn't mention in group one. We've had similar energies come through. It could be around shared assets or something like that. It's gonna, how I'm going to see this here. 
But let's keep going. Let's see what comes up. Five of coins. Okay, yeah, this is something to do with assets, possibly. We've got here a person who's left out in the cold. Okay. Um, feeling left out. Something about yeah, not, not getting their fair share. This could just be relationship type stuff as well. Something's not fair though. Let's keep going. Details, details. All right, interesting. This does feel a bit like shared assets. Um, because Scorpio or eighth house, it can be like, yeah, shared assets, inherent, inheritance, wills. Okay, interesting that that's coming up. Let's see. All right, we've got your deck here. So what are we going to confirm? What do I want to ask? Kind of, I want to explore this concept of feeling left out. Details, details. This, this has a lot of papers and all this kind of thing. We do have this shared assets type thing. We do have sort of marriage or partnership here. We've got somebody feeling left out. Let's explore what... What are these papers about? What are these papers referring to? Sometimes I do work with, I know there's a handful of you that I work with and yes, there, there can be some things on this two eight axis and shared assets and this kind of thing. What are the papers referring to? Six of cups, nostalgia. And I'm getting in my head the phrase, something about an agreement from the past, something from the past. Any more information about what details, 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 and we've got memories. That's how I read that six of cups or an agreement from the past. Three of pentacles. Okay, and this is a, a work sort of a card. This could be to do with work. Okay. Hmm. Work. Why is Scorpio here? This could be quite a very specific reading, guys. <laughs> but let's see. Let's hopefully there are some general messages as well. So hang in here. Let's see why is Scorpio here. Six of Swords. You're leaving something behind. This could be to do with a, an ex-partner or an old workplace even. And what does Mars want you to know? Mars is here in this seventh house. I think Mars kind of wants you to fight for what's right, for fight, to fight for your fair share. It's like there's some situation from the past where you didn't get your fair share. And I feel like Mars wants you to do something. So, okay, so you didn't get your fair share. And maybe there's a situation that you left, right? Let's see. So fair share. And it's interesting, the cards all jumbled at that point as well. Something went wrong like, and it needed to be straightened out. But you've come out of the situation feeling like I didn't get my fair share. Okay, what? And it feels like, yeah, you need to act. So let's look into this. You didn't get your fair share. Didn't get your fair share. Five of Cups. Yeah. Okay. This. This is. Um, you. You're really. You're really feeling it. Okay. And anyone would, right? So allow the feelings to be there because they've come to the surface for clearing, for healing. And you're doing great at that. 
Any more information about not getting the fair share? Seven of Cups. Ooh. Options. I think you might be being hard on yourself because you know that there were lots of different ways of going about things, possibly. I think this could be a thing of that you're being hard on yourself. Mm. So yeah, are you being hard on yourself? Actually, let's take another deck now. Let's take from here. Oh, hanged man. Whatever can happen at any time can happen today. <laughs> Seneca, that is, that's a funny quote here. Yeah, uh, whatever can happen at any time can happen today. And I just had the thought, well, you letting this situation go can happen right now, like Pisces. But is it that simple? Is this something that you can just let go? I've got the hanged man. This is also hanged man is also a card of um because in the in the traditional tarot he's hanging upside down and when you're hanging upside down you see the whole situation in a completely different viewpoint so that might be worth doing and that could also be connecting in with the seven of cups here to think about all the different angles of this situation and that perhaps you haven't really lost out anything. Perhaps you haven't lost anything. And perhaps this whole situation was really just freeing you for something better. Okay. Uh, let's take one more from here. And then we'll get some quotes from Chuck Spezzano. See what comes there. Interesting situation. There are a few things this could be. I'd love to hear in the comments below if this really resonates. Judgment, yeah, interesting. This comes up. Because this is like Mars is in this judgment sort of a position. The judge archetype really sits here in the seventh house because the judge is able to see from all points of view and doesn't particularly take any one side. So we've got the judgment card here. As a man casting off worn out garments taketh new ones, so the dweller in the body entereth into ones that are new. Interesting. And I think that's what you're... I, think I, can, I can feel a lot of renewal energy here. And this is about stepping into the new you, you know, that's, that's what this is. You're, you're meant to go forward and step into the new you. Let's take a card just to see, just to get some information about this new you. What is this new you that you're stepping into? Who is this new you? How are you in this new Three of Wands, yeah, you're, you're meant to design that now. Look to the future and see what, who you are and what you want to build going forward. And this is a technique I've been sharing with a few people lately and it is the future self kind of technique. So to build the now, think of who that future version of you is or who you want to be but in the now act as if you're already that future self so let's say your ambition is to be the ceo of a big company well pretend you are that now and with this situation act as if you are fully empowered fully rich fully everything right now 
take all your decisions from that successful mindset kind of thing. Interesting. Let's take a couple from here, a couple of quotes. I'd love to hear what this, what this situation is. Be really good to know. Relationships can be the road to heaven or the road to hell, depending on how you use them. Used correctly, they become the fastest path of growth. Used for your ego, they become an endless source of misery. Yeah, so true. And I feel like, you know, and th this could be, yeah, this could be a situation where somebody, somebody used you incorrectly. Somebody used your goodness and kindness incorrectly. And you have come out of the experience feeling that, yeah, I, I didn't get my fair share. And like, I totally understand. Like, yeah, perhaps you've been cheated in some way or betrayed in some way or, you know, um, this kind of thing. And this is a bit of an attacking kind of a, an energy here in the house of the other. So it's like perhaps someone has, you know, misused your goodness, your kindness. But what it is now is it's for you to create the new you. And these experiences just won't happen anymore. They won't because you've, you've, You've experienced this now, you have, you've experienced this now, you have, it's like you won't need this experience ever again because, and there's some reason for it. There's always some reason for these bad experiences that come in because it does make us stronger, it does make us wiser, it does enable us to advocate for someone else. If we see someone else, you know, we can, we can help them. And a lot of the people who come and watch these, you guys are light workers, your counselors, your tarot readers, your you know astrologers. You're doing this work, right? Or, or or you're doing some other work, but you know that at some point in the future you're going to be doing this work, right? So whatever uh, bad experiences you have had to go through, it is you know. Yeah, I've got this phrase, something about earning your stripes or something. <laughs> My brother said that the other day, something about your stripes. Or I don't know. Yeah, it's like you need to have been there and done that before you can help somebody else. Amazing. Okay, let's have a look what's in here. Control may look like the answer to making yourself safe, but it is based on and compensates for fear. And if you invest in control you automatically block love. Fear always seeks to have you dominate and be the one in charge. Ooh, interesting. That is this card right here. That is fascinating. So this is an important message for sure. I mean, you know, perhaps in, in this situation you, yeah, you tried to be in the controlling position or whatever, that's possible. Fear always seeks to have you dominate and be the one in charge. And I'm just getting the phrase, you need to, this is about self-love. This is about you being loving towards yourself, you advocating for yourself, you standing up for yourself. That's what's needed here. And I think that's, that's about it. And the new you is, you're on your way to it every single day. You're, you're creating that all the time with your thoughts and everything. So group number two, I hope this reading has contained some messages that have been important for you. Let me know in the comments below how you got on. I'd love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, you are in the right place. Before we draw from here, we're gonna find out what Mars wants you to know. <laughs> Mars energy, 
is that doing, can do, energy, drive, ambition. Okay, so we've got the first card there. I'm going to take one from here. I hope you're having a good week wherever you are. I'm, I'm asking everyone about the eclipse. Was anyone else wiped out by that last eclipse? Because I was wiped out by it, I think, and which doesn't often happen because the eclipse before that was fine. <laughs> it had no effect. But the last one, oh my goodness. Yeah, it was just like had this huge well, I had a bit of a headache actually, and just this exhaustion. Quite weird. So I don't know if there's some kind of eclipse symptoms. It can be. Okay, take one of these. Find out what's happening for you, group number three. Oh, and um, let's hope we get uh, a bit more clarity this time. Gosh, yeah, I'm going to just ask for uh, my Guru Dev, Guru Mata. Please be with me in this reading. I might as well because last last week, Group Two, that was a difficult reading for me. It was there was a lot of confusion energy, and uh, yeah, I think that was also probably me processing some eclipse stuff. Or I don't know. That was so. Let's hope for. You know, we want something that's like an arrow today, don't we? We want group three focused and we want, yeah, come on, group three, let's see. Oh, good. Well, we've got a good card <laughs> right at the beginning. We've got Mars in the 11th. Excellent. Wields influence in top circles. Yes. Acquires big wealth, properties, fame. This is a great star. Competitive with elder siblings. Difficult relations with children. Yeah, that's a possibility as well because we've got Mars opposite the fifth house of children okay so that is a possibility but this is a great i mean look any planet in the 11th house is just sensational right every planet's happy to be there so we're off to a good start all right jupiter oh nice expansion gratitude morality enlightenment yes this is wonderful good okay Son of Swords. So this is the Knight of Swords. The Knights, of course, are always on a horse. And he's interesting because he's here in the night time. It's also quite interesting his direction. He's going in this direction here. And I think if he was going in this direction, he'd be going into the future. But this is kind of interesting because I feel like he's going into the past. Let's see if that's relevant. Goblins. Okay. Nice. Five. Mm. Can we see any goblins? What's... Okay, there's, maybe that's a little goblin. Oh, there as well. What's that? It's like a ring. Okay. Cool. Let's have a look. Mars in the 11th. Jupiter. What are you expanding? Let's take a look. What are you expanding at this time? Seven of Pentacles. So you're in a bit of a standstill as well in some ways. You're assessing something. You're assessing the growth of your business, possibly the growth of... I'm still none the wiser, so let's... Getting the phrase, yeah, good to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. So you're taking a step back, you're looking at the bigger picture of what in your life. Taking a step back. Competition. Competition. Hmm. This could be, I mean, 
a lot of you are your creative professionals you are creative people and sometimes we do have to yeah take a look at the competition look at that we've got uh, Mars's seventh eighth aspect here on the sixth house of competition right so this is a good time for you to take a step back look at the competition see what other people are doing what other people are creating around you that might inspire the new for you right might inspire some new things okay well that's good Knight of Swords. Why is this here? And goblins. Actually, I think I want to find out about the goblins. Why do we have goblins present? <laughs> that is very interesting. Okay, why, what are these goblins? Knight of Wands. Whoa. Feels like there's been some activity in your life and maybe you have been it's kind of like you you have your energy has been needed to um, overcome something and this I think could be quite internal and just to do with your own self we've got change here it's kind of like I feel like Maybe you've been battling some inner demons or goblins, right? Let's let's take a look at that. Have you been this is some internal work you've been doing. This is some internal work you've been doing, isn't it? Let's see. Let's get a card of confirmation. You've been battling some inner you've been doing your shadow work, something like this. The Empress, yeah, and I think you've been doing a good job. Uh, I think you've been, you know. Okay, that wants to be here. Let's take it. Whoa, yeah, yeah, this is good. Okay, I see what's going on here. This is, you've been doing a great job and I think you have cleared another layer of heartbreak, right? You've cleared another layer of heartbreak. You've done it and this has been, this has been successful. This is like a gift. This is, you know, you have... Mm, evolved you've expanded yeah look at all this is coming together now good you've expanded and you have um, graduated as well okay look at that you're you're on these horses you've graduated you know to this to this new level okay um, the Empress and I'm getting a sense, yeah, you, you're, doing, you're doing really well with this. You're doing really well with handling your own inner demons, not letting them get the better of you. And this can be, like this can manifest as a new level of health, um, you know, where there might be certain health challenges that you just don't have to deal with anymore. Uh, I know for me, this, this has happened. I used to get chronic headaches and I just don't get those anymore I did have a headache this was the, uh, the eclipse I did have one but I didn't take anything for it and like I used to have headaches to the point where you know I'm kind of I'm in bed for a whole day and I can't do anything now I might have a headache but I'm working and I'm making a monthly and I'm you know it's like so I yeah I have experienced exactly what this is this is I and I feel like you and if you haven't experienced this yet this is what's coming for you now okay there is um, because ego will try to fight to stay on ego wants to uh, keep itself going ego doesn't want to die but you are getting a lot more powerful internally you're expanding your energy is expanding you are mm, there's more speed okay so you're also probably vibrating at a greater speed and you see, because if you take too much divine energy too fast and you haven't done the work and you haven't progressed and you haven't, it will burn you. <laughs> like it can just wipe you out. So you need to build up gradually. You need to become strong and you will be able to handle the finer, faster energies and you won't get burnt, right? So I think you're doing a fantastic job. 
of clearing out your heart space and you're becoming more and more in charge definitely of your own being of your own life of your own energy good and I'm also getting the phrase yeah, I can't be manipulated anymore let's have a look at this what's what's here son of swords why is this card here page of pentacles okay so this all this work that you've been doing yes it's been helping you a lot spiritually and why it's been helping you spiritually so that you can build a terrific material world around you and it feels like I can't imagine this is going to be too difficult but let's check it out a little bit uh, because you've mastered your energy and with the spare energy that you're going to have you're going to be able to now master the material world because I think you've been spending a lot of time looking after and mastering yeah, your, your spiritual self right so let's take a look some more information about this page of pentacles what what are you materializing what now you've got spare energy type thing strength great yeah okay good And this strength now so now that you've dealt with some spiritual layer you've successfully improved your energy you're going to be a lot stronger and I think you're going to be a lot stronger in the material world more able to materialize gifts things that you want right got the 11th house here so let's get some more information about this what are you going to build with this new energy that's available to you? It's like this new energy that's come online. Well, definitely you are going to build an ability to I've got the word competition, but we've got the five of wands here. help others resolve their conflicts because look at her she's in a white coat and we do have a lot of people who it's like th this will help you build your practice if you are a practitioner of something okay because and this could be this could be like a lawyer this could be you know some kind of consultant or some kind of um, you're going to be so strong and able to really help help other people solve their stuff this is what you're getting strong for this is great oh i'm loving this group number three i think we're quite good here i think let's get a couple of quotes i think your energy is in really great shape and if you're not feeling it i know i'm certainly i'm pretty exhausted still <laughs> but like but if you're not feeling it know that that's okay this is what you're materializing this is what's coming in for you and these goblins they're just little drawings on a bit of card <laughs> you know you it's like nothing can you know even if it materializes for real and comes into your room you'll probably just be like oh okay there's a goblin <laughs> you know it's like yeah you, you you come into this place of you can't be bucked you can't be uh manipulated you can't be fooled you can't be you know you're becoming unshakable you're becoming really strong as you join your partner ask yourself do i want this bad feeling grievance or being right or do i want love and money oh fantastic okay it's your choice and it's as simple as that yes I think that that's so true and I think you've come you very much come to this understanding where it's like yeah I don't want and it's like well yeah the, the goblin can be there or the grievance or whatever it's like oh okay well uh, that's great that's there but uh, quite frankly uh, I would like this <laughs> you know I, I want yeah I want love and money great 
It's your choice, love and abundance. You know, we've got abundance here, Page of Pentacles. And we've got you, the practitioner, helping people. You know, your practice is growing. You're becoming strong. Great. And as you join your partner, you know, it doesn't have to be a partner. Perhaps you're single. It could be as you join the divine. Okay. So as you join the divine, ask yourself, do I want this bad feeling or do I want love? Amazing. And it's as simple as that. It's just a simple little choice. And you're consistently choosing love. Every choice point, you just keep choosing love, 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 love. That's how you build a beautiful life. At every little turn, if you can just choose love. Okay. When you are responsive to your partner, your child or anyone, you feel so much love for them that you begin to feel in love. This level of inspiration uplifts us. We feel more of who we really are. We are energized and refreshed. Oh, that's so beautiful, group number three. I love this. This is exactly where you are. I think you are feeling more of who you really are. And I think you've come to a new level of physical energy. And this will translate into abundance. Okay, it will. It's going to translate into... Hi there, group three. I just had to change the battery this time. Uh, yeah, I think this is you. This is where you're at. And if you're not feeling it just yet, don't worry. This is what's coming in next. That you're going to feel more of who you really are like you're going to um, bring more divine light through down from your crown right so we've got the seventh chakra the crown chakra but we you know we've got a whole silver cord that goes right up to source I do believe it's got we've got you know 36 chakras 40 chakras I haven't studied all of those as much as I've studied is up to about I think I've studied up to about 12 um, there are a few teachers where you can go to for that information. I know Diana Cooper does teach. I'm pretty sure she teaches as far as 12. I'm trying to think, where did I learn up to 12? There were some websites that don't exist anymore. And they were just written. They were articles. And I used to read those. Like, we're talking, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago, a long time ago. I used to read those things. So, yeah, I can't point you to any... Um, those places don't exist now. But... You know, we've got a lot of chakras above our head, right? But the point is that you bring the light from the top. You, you, we bring it down through and, and you voice them through your fifth and you get your heart on board. And when you, once your heart is on board, then you can use the energy of the first three chakras to materialize things. This is why it's really important to love what you do. If you love what you do, if you love your work, then it's quite easy. Your heart is on board, you see, and you can work in the now moment. You can use the energy of the first three chakras. A lot of very spiritual beings and people who come to these pick a card readings, your first three chakras might be a bit out of whack. So you're not um, as able to materialize, manifest things uh, in the material world. That's me too. I, I have that as well, where it's sort of the top three chakras are very easy and they're, they're good, and, but the first three they don't work as well, right? But So our job is to bring the light down. Okay, we're bringing the light down through the energy field. You bring it down through the heart, and then ideally, yeah, you bring it through the third. Okay, this yellow color, Leo here, you bring it through the third, so you have the confidence to start your thing or whatever. You know, you bring it through the second, and that is, well, it's quite emotional, that's creative. You bring it through the first, which is, red right and that's how you uh, you earth something you make it real so our job is very much to bring the light down to the earth and you're doing it group number three you're doing great so let me know how you got on in the comments below i would love to hear from you and i look forward to seeing you next time